Hey folks, walk with me. <laughs> I have my camera um, situated differently today and I'm having a hard time figuring out where and how to maneuver around the screen. Um, but in any case, uh, philosophy, something I've always been really interested in and um, have explored a lot. Uh, you know, there was periods of time where I was certainly interested in Descartes, Jean-Paul Sartre. Um, I feel like I, I'm going to name a lot of French people, but <laughs> um, but so it goes. But the, but the one who stands out to me is not. Um, and to the extent to which the uh, English were generally not very fanatical about the French, there's that. So Alan Watts uh, is really sort of my go-to philosopher, at least for the time being. This could change over time because again, there were people who I was interested in for lengthy periods of time and I just came upon uh, Alan Watts around maybe two years ago or something. So it hasn't been that long. Um, but there's always more to explore, right? And when I get interested in something, I go very deep for a very long time. And so, but then sort of when I feel that I've exhausted it or something new or different crops up that sort of grabs my attention in a similar way, which most things don't, um, then I may sort of, you know, set that aside and um, gravitate to something else. But the main reason that Alan Watts is, is currently my go-to, and there's a lot of reasons, but, but there's one thing that really sort of stands out to me. So before I had really gotten too deep into him, you know, I had heard a few things, I was interested. He has a tremendous voice. <laughs> so if you, um, you know, talk about like the lure of the siren song, for sailors, you know, it feels sort of similar to that. It's, it's hard to not listen to him because his voice is so spectacular. Um, so as I was sort of like just getting a toe in the water with Alan Watts, I had been having this question in my head, which may sound odd. We don't have to belabor this point, but I had this question in my head of like, why? does the earth feel the need to, or at least put in the, the effort to, transform itself into all of these different things? In other words, the trees, the grass, the leaves, people, all of the animals, whatever, <laughs> are all reformations of elements of the earth. Right? Elements and materials. And you, you think of, of anything, right? We're all making it from something that's derived from, even if it's a couple of steps derived from, something that is already in existence. But it was, it was extra interesting to me of not when it's something enforced by a human, but why Mother Nature takes this course. Why not just have this sort of, like steady state rock ball of a planet and not have to sprout up all of this stuff and, and reform it and then degrade it and reform it again. And then I came to a talk on Alan Watts. And again, this is just one of those situations where it's like, I have something bugging me in the back of my mind and I'm like, I can't, I can't solve for this can't seem to get clarity on this. And then seemingly out of nowhere, <laughs> this person or this thing that I had been sort of lightly diving into comes in and just slams the answer over my head. And so for the time being, at least, Alan Watts has given me essentially my axiom for life and what reality is. And what he said was, imagine a situation where you could go to sleep 
And on any given sleeping night, you could dream a dream that felt as though it lasted 75 years or any amount of time that you want for that matter, but that you could dictate the amount of time in which it felt like, although it was truly to you who's dreaming it, just one night. And in this dream, you could, you would first start off by doing all the most spectacular, lavish things, right? You would have the most wondrous of adventures and you would never be in danger and you <laughs> could do miraculous things. And right, it's just all good and joy and ease to some degree. And slowly but surely, you grow tired of that situation. And you say, well, I want a surprise. And so I want to leave something up to chance. And so slowly but surely, you take further and further out gambles from that pure joy existence that you first dabbled in. And then eventually you continue to take these further and further out gambles until you find yourself living the life that you're living today. And that that's what the existence is. Now, let me tie it back to my original query. If this is a dream, essentially, and it's just all of these different manifestations of an existence, right? In order to, to experience different things, to have different experiences, not just as a human, but as a tree, as a leaf, as a pine cone, <laughs> as a squirrel, whatever it is. Um, how does this tie into why does the earth, you know, manifest in these many different ways? Well, it would have to in order to provide all of these different experiences. That's how these experiences take shape. It's because you're in a world with this extreme abundance, right? When nature produces flowers and seeds and it spreads them. I'm sure you've seen this, you know, one dandelion, right? Uh, how I'd, I'm sure there are statistics out there, but hundreds or thousands of seeds that are spread from that. And the biologists or whomever among you will say that it's in an effort to make sure that there's survival, but survival for what? Why does that dandelion care if there's more dandelions later? I don't think it does. It doesn't make sense to me that it does. What Alan Watts says to this is it's not for survival that there's this extreme abundance. It's a celebration. And so the spreading of these hundreds or thousands of seeds from one little plant is like fireworks going off. It's like a wondrous display of lightning. Um, it's like the stars in the sky, all scattered about and in infinite seeming qu uh, quantity because it's a celebration, not because they need to have more dandelions when they're gone, because that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And so then, yeah, it would make sense that this world and the earth would take many different forms from being just a simple rock, soil, even rock, soil, water ball, because the purpose of the dream is to have all of these different experiences. And so you are engaged in this celebration of things and of life and of formations. And that to me brought so much, I don't know if comfort is the right word. Felt like a, a, clarity, a comfort of clarity 
um, that I just couldn't ignore it. And that then, of course, set me really down the rabbit hole. And, um, and I've been steeped in it for quite some time now. But, um, you know, look up some, some videos right here. There's some that are better than others, quality-wise, but there are a lot of recordings, thankfully, that he did. Um, audio, almost exclusively audio. But there are a lot of them. And you'll find a lot where <laughs> people in the comments get really annoyed because they include music, but there's a whole chill step, you know, with Alan Watts genre out there. And so some people like it, some people don't. But if you don't like the ones with the music, then just look for There's plenty that don't have the music. Um, and there are plenty that have been cleaned up really well. This is probably a little harder, but I would just say beware that there's also some that seem to be AI generated in the theme and in the spirit of Alan Watts. But this is a computer <laughs> imitating the voice of Alan Watts and trying to say things that Alan Watts, you know, would or could say. And so some of the things that you find may be not actual talks or things that he said. So just be aware of that. If it sounds too, I mean, the ones that I've heard, you can just sort of tell that they're AI. Just enough. They're very good. But just enough you can tell that they're AI to go, hmm, I see what's happening here. Uh, which kind of sucks because it really sort of pollutes the, um, you know, the, the true authentic value of, of what he brought into the world. But... This is what people do, right? This is the many different iterations that it all takes. So if I sent you down a rabbit hole, congratulations. I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you have anyone that you think would be interesting to, to dive into, feel free to comment it below. It would always be cool to sort of, um, yeah, just find, hear about something that might not be on my radar, that might not be apparent and, um, and, and see if it sort of strikes a chord or not. Maybe you'll see it in a future video. All right, folks, well, you walked with me. I was able to stretch that out to, <laughs> to 13 minutes. I'm so long-winded sometimes. I get going and I'm 90 seconds into a video and I'm thinking, how's this gonna be 10 minutes? And then we're a third past that, so. But that means we got in certainly over a half mile, probably leaning toward two thirds of a mile. So Coolio, if you walked, if not, no worries. I really appreciate you watching this far. And as always, I will see you in the next video.